Hello and welcome to the Trade Site U.S. Stocks and Futures Market Preview for the week beginning Monday, January 4th, 2016. Welcome to the new year and ending Friday the 8th of January 2016. We've got a long weekend here at Trade Site before the markets open with Friday. Markets close for New Year's, and obviously Saturday, Sunday, and then we get back to work. Obviously, it was a slow light week. We'll look at that volume number uh, in a bit here, but uh, overall, uh, you know, it was still an okay week for us from a trading perspective. We just kept it simple. I uh, hope you had a great trading week. A couple of administrative points. First, we will be doing a year-end preview uh, on the vi on YouTube, a separate video about the year in general. This is not that video. This is the usual stocks and futures preview for the week ahead. Uh, if you've not yet taken a trial of our services, feel free to start out to 2016 doing so. Get two weeks with us. We'll help you learn to make some money in the markets that you care about. And uh, we'll also, we've already posted to our market blog, if you go to the trade site website, uh, we've posted our results for December in stocks, futures, and Forex, and we will also be posting here at some point in the next few days the summary of the year, what we made in uh, with our calls in each of those uh, markets. So keep an eye on that and keep checking back to the blog, or if you uh, follow us on Twitter, uh, we do feed those into the into the Twitter feed as we put them up, so you can easily follow them. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Here's the ES, and... I will say we closed at 20.36.25. Okay, that was the uh, closing price here. And actually, let's use the uh, S&P cash for this real quick. So on the S&P cash index, we closed at 20.43.94. 20.43.94, and we closed uh, last December at uh, 20.58.90. So 20.43.94 is 15 points basically lower than we closed last December and I should also I should also point out that we covered about that in range today so uh, we could have even closed right at that same number we covered that area that we closed at last year on today's trading that's pretty amazing I haven't I have been a long 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 time since I've seen anything like that we're basically just dead flat for the year and of course everybody remembers the crash in August and that looks like a blip now and if I basically zoom this a bit so you can see the entire year in one chart there you go you know, the whole year comes down to the uh, how flat it was for all those months. Everybody was complaining about how slow. And then it really, you know, August shook everybody. And then we started to get the volatility. And even though we ended up closing right where we started and basically closing in that range that we were stuck in for many months, it sure felt like, as usual, once August shakes off, everything picked up and the trading got a lot better. Uh, so we still have several months before we hit the summer doldrums again. But uh, let's not forget what this year was about. And again, we'll recap all that uh, in the end of your summary. So... Um, again, we lost some points on Friday late in the day. I'll show you what that looked like intraday in a bit. Oil closed the year. Crude oil at 37.075, up a few cents for the session and off the lows just barely. But certainly oil had a very negative year overall. Uh, gold closed up 70 cents, but very near the lows as well. Uh, like I said, the S&P cash down 19.42 on Thursday. NASDAQ 100, the NDX down 58.74 on Thursday. Uh, again, markets are closed Friday. Uh, Sox down 9.60. I mean, basically, the Sox has been boring for the last three months. Biotechs down $25.50. Uh, the VIX closed at 18.21. That's up 92 cents uh, for the uh, for the session. Trend closed at 1.27. Notice the 10-day moving average because we've had some light volume days. The 10-day moving average of the trend. We've had a couple of high closes there, all the way up to 1.58. So that's not normal, but it's uh, certainly not a warning sign for the market by any stretch. Uh, here's the daily chart of NASDAQ volume, 1.3 billion shares for the session here on a Thursday. Again, everything we predicted for the week happened, right? The volume, strongest day ends up being the last day, even though it was obviously still poor volume, but there's just some last minute tax stuff that gets done and wrapping up the year, and that creates some extra volume that's not real. So you can see Christmas Eve down there hits the low volume point for the year, and this entire week of the four days, completely underneath everything else that had come. That's what happens. It's just a very hazardous trading environment. you got to be selective. And I think we were this week pretty selective and, and got it done, but you can't find much. Uh, advanced decline ratio on the last day of the year, negative 900 on the NASDAQ, negative 715 on the New York. Google closing out down $12.29 after basically making a uh, new high close the last two days. Also notice the 13 sell signal that we pointed out on Google uh, on uh, Monday. And then we moved all the way up to that risk line and tested it. That was the high there. Now we're rolling over. And guess what? Now that the new, now that the new year's coming into play, I said this would probably be down a little bit the last day or so because some shorter is getting ahead of what's likely to happen, which is now that these stocks have been up all year, nobody wanted to sell them and lock in the tax gain. 
come Monday, they certainly can. So look out below on those stocks. Meanwhile, Apple, not up for the year and not up to close out the year either. Down two points, almost the lowest close of the year, actually. Only two days uh, closed lower, and that was during the August dip. So Apple not looking very productive. Amazon also got the 13 sell signal. This was uh, more like 10 days ago. Came up just again on, <laughs> it's amazing how that math works out. For those of you who are used to our tools, the Seeker and Comer tools, look at the risk line on that to the penny almost on a $700 stock it was the high on Tuesday and Wednesday couldn't get through so that sell signal is still in place and now again Amazon's one of those that can sell off in January because the tax situation has released Netflix down two dollars and uh, 33 cents put call closed at uh, 87 and a half cents all right so those are the broad markets let's take a look at the futures in 10 minute candles if I slide this over so we get rid of uh, Christmas Eve last week uh, which was a half day. So here's basically what you got for the week. It was a slight gap down. Uh, we tried to go lower, came up, and basically flat closed for Monday. Uh, Tuesday gapped up and pushed a little bit higher. It was a good day for us. Wednesday uh, gapped down, did not fill the gap, came back down into the, the gap from the prior session, closed at the lows. And then Thursday we gapped down, so we were opening that, filled the gap from Tuesday morning, uh, tried to push lower, came back up, filled today's gap, and then rolled a little bit. So we did leave a gap above from uh, Tuesday's close into Wednesday on the ES. Let's take a look at the same thing on the NQ. So again, we'll get rid of Christmas Eve here and just look at this week. And uh, you know, same scenario, left some gaps above, which is always interesting. Uh, but at any rate, closed basically flat for the week. Uh, all right, what do we have coming out here in the first week of the year? Let's look at the economic data. Monday, construction spending and ISM index at 10 a.m. That's 30 minutes into the market. Tuesday, nothing until after, uh, late in the market, auto sales and truck sales. Wednesday is the uh, MBA mortgage index uh, at 7 a.m. Eastern time. We've got ADP employment change at 8.15 a.m. And then an hour before the bell is trade balance. That can move the market. And then 30 minutes in, we get factory orders and ISM services. 10.30 an hour in, we get the crude oil inventories. That's the weekly number. And then uh, Thursday, the challenger job cuts at 7.30 a.m. Eastern time. The weekly initial and continuing jobless claims an hour before the bell. And then uh, an hour into the market, the natty gas number. Friday is actually a very active session uh, for data, uh, which is not you know normal necessarily. Uh, but this Friday is. So we've got uh, some stuff to look forward to on Friday, including the uh, unemployment rate, which is a big deal obviously, and uh, the regular stuff that comes with that, the non-farm payrolls data, the uh, average work week, hourly earnings, and then 30 minutes into the market, wholesale inventories, and at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we've got consumer credit. Welcome to 2016. I hope it's as good as last year was. Charge as usual, brought to you by eSignal 12. We hope to help you out throughout 2016. Thanks for following us. If you do find these videos useful, please like them on YouTube. It does help us out. Good luck.